What is going on YouTube? This is Ass Roots. I'm going to review the debut solo mixtape by rapper Travis Scott. And basically this project is called Owl Pharaoh and it came out in the spring of 2013. Now the thing about this project, it was it was a part of T.I.'s Grand Hustle Records label, which I didn't know about that. I thought he kind of came up more with Kanye West, but apparently in the beginning he was kind of affiliated with T.I. also. But this particular album seems to me like one of the kickoff ones, I think between like Migos... Travis Scott and like Yo Gotti and folks like that that were kind of starting to kick off. Gucci Mane was another one that were starting to kick off like the pretty predominant 2010s trap sound that continues to be a pop up and popular aspect today. But this is one that was kind of revolutionary, it seemed like, for the time. This is definitely a pretty heralded mixtape, I would have to say. I like the concept about this one just because it did a lot of things. And considering that this project is free, that's kind of a state of the art thing just to be able to get something that kind of kicked things off. I mean, you would think at this stage it being 10 years old that it's kind of ancient but I just kind of look after it it made a lot of noise and some of these bubblers especially the singles on here give me kind of rem remnants of like stuff that's kind of like the early stages of trap music that is available for purchase on albums and stuff like that Sh stuff that you would find stuff that you would find for like $18.99, $24.99, stuff like that. This more expensive projects that just came out across like the past three, four, five years or even past three or four or five months, something like that. So it's pretty interesting to kind of get some of these looming kind of whip ready, nightclub ready, and this overall kind of emphatic and sprawling kind of nightclub and trap oriented type tunes because this is definitely this kicked off a lot and this is pretty interesting that both ti and kanye west helped helm this in a lot of ways to be able to get this forth he was a part of double xl's freshman class of 2013 but travis scott shot to the top pretty quickly like the thing about it is is i have downloaded like his 2014 mixtape which i think that one's called like days before rodeo that one kind of advanced the sound too but i would definitely say listening to this project that it has like a lot of like like it had it had like a lot of styles that happen to continue to be throughout music today it's just interesting to see some of these early remnants of just kind of what went on just the fact that this is sort of this is the sort of stuff that stuck around that's not just i mean at this point it's kind of an era but for the time being it doesn't feel that way just because these years continue to be ongoing so this is definitely something just being able to say that this sort of free music is definitely something you need to gobble up and get a hold of if you haven't i mean it's 10 years old but just the concept if you haven't it's worthwhile investing in this because this kind of has like some good renditions of 2010's trap and this that sort of emphasis as far as like kind of that sort of concept so for me to talk about the singles like there were three of them there were three singles the first single is block of the flame and this one's definitely like a pretty this yeah, Block of La Flame has a definite kind of haunting, this kind of real dusky sounding trap oriented production. I feel like this is a kind of kickoff one. I think this song actually released in 2012, so it's interesting. I thought 2010's trap music kind of manifested like in 2013 with, you know, like Migos songs like Hannah Montana and some of those type songs, but it seems like this was kind of one that was doing that particular type sound. I think this was just a particular breath of fresh air, and this is just an overall kind of invigorating and kind of avant-garde at the time kind of rap song that just did a lot. I feel like when I listen to songs like when you think of like Meek Mill's Dream Chasers 2 and Dreams and Nightmares and Rick Ross's God Forgives I Don't, some of those kind of more differential sounds. I mean, a lot of those still sounded like 2000s rap music and that type of stuff. And there's other folks like, you know, T.I.'s Trouble Man didn't sound like this and this other records amongst that particular time period. Yo Gotti's 2012 mixtapes didn't sound like this either. So it's just kind of, this was definitely one that sounds like it's ripped out of 2017 or 2018. It just feels like it was pretty much like a I want to say like a relative kind of, I feel like Block of the Flame was definitely like a demo kind of song for like 2010's Trap that kind of happened just because this was something that sounded like it came out this years later in that sort of context. It's very haunting, kind of glittering, sparkling kind of trap song as far as that kind of goes, just in a real kind of dusky and just evening based kind of feel. Definite nightclub kind of value towards it. It's just interesting kind of get it. But yeah, it's just kind of an entry kind of one for that sort of sense. Keen... Quintana is the second single in this one. Quint Quintana is definitely one that has a little bit more kind of cruising out kind of energy. This is definitely kind of like a pull-up song. This is kind of one where you just kind of 
have like a slow creep and just kind of cruise around and just that emphatic kind of bass where you can hear the song bumping miles away. Quintana is definitely a song that you can hear from like miles away. It just has a real kind of slow creep and kind of emphatic kind of feel towards it. A little bit more emphasized than Block of the Flame. Definitely has more kind of dramatic kind of supreme kind of productions about it. Definitely. It's interesting to kind of get Wally on this song because that doesn't typically suit his style. But it's interesting to kind of get that. It's a good one for him on there as well. This really happens to kind of be like... Um, these are just kind of some premier 2010s trap type songs. It's interesting that this album was free just because it feels like these are some ones that really slap and continue to. I mean, they're kind of old, but I still feel like they hold a lot of value as far as that kind of goes just within that sort of sense. So these are just good ones, good kind of crawling, just overall looming kind of nightclub kind of song in a sense, but also very nice cruising around. Just an entry, kind of one of those initial songs where trap was just all over cars and just that sort of concept where folks just consistently cruise out to trap music. This is one of those initial ones, I think, that cover that topic. Yeah, this just feels like an early, this just feels like a premature and kind of early streaming song highlight. This is the sort of stuff when Spotify started being in the whip and that type of stuff and things like that. Apple streaming, some of those type services. This is definitely one that felt like one of the earliest ones to kind of lap up. This is just an overall kind of like uh, pioneer kind of highlight for that sort of sounds. That kind of works. Upper Echelon is the third single. And now this is supposed to have two chains on here, but it doesn't. I don't know if there's like a retail version of this mixtape. I'm not really sure, but the mixtape version only has T.I. on here, and they both do a good job. It's interesting to kind of get T.I. on this sort of song just because this was not the typical sound. This is kind of like second wind T.I. where he was kind of in like the next phase of his career past like his 2000s and prison days, his, 2000, his 2000s trap and early 2010s prison days. So it's interesting to kind of get this sort of sound from T.I. Just the initial thing of seeing what he's on on like this kind of 2010s trap type music. It's interesting to kind of get it. I mean, I feel like Travis Scott suits this song better, but it's not like T.I. sounds out of place on here. This is just an overall good one. And um, yeah, the, it, it's, it's, it's interesting kind of seeing like the prenatal stages of some of this stuff, just because you look after it, there just weren't a ton of songs that kind of had this particular sound at this particular time. So it's just interesting kind of having like a new leaf as like the tide's starting to shift and seeing some of this kind of, uh, like metamorphosis kind of stuff that kind of went along with this. It. It's just interesting to kind of get that one. I feel like this one is definitely kind of like an early stage version of something out of 2016 or 2018. This those kind of looming, kind of auto-tune heavy kind of songs that this is kind of has that particular context about it. So all three of these singles are just really kind of nightclub and fast whip kind of highlights. If you like your car and that type of stuff, these are definitely some ones to pull up to and cruise around to. I mean, I, I know that these songs are kind of old, but I think in some cases, depending upon how you play them, they could continue to create traffic and generate buzz and that type of stuff. They just definitely kind of have that vibe about it as far as that kind of goes. These are just particular particular dusky and kind of evening based nightclub kind of highlights that just have like a lot of emphasis and it's just kind of you look after with the typical stuff that probably gets played like NBA young boy and Lil Durk and some of those type people that are being played right now 5v04 and those type people like some of that type stuff that's real typical of like 2022 2023 you should school some of these motherfuckers and go back to like al Faro and say hey you remember this type shit and that sort of stuff as far as talking about some of these type gems as far as that goes because a lot of these are pretty stellar highlights but that basically takes care of the singles all of these just have like auto-tune kind of bass heavy and ad lib all of these kind of have like auto-tune heavy and real good ad-libbing from Travis Scott. The typical stuff that he was doing on like his later albums is kind of in like a more early and premature type form. It's not like premature means that it's untalented. The quality is here. It's just kind of like the first initial versions of some of the stuff that would happen years and years later with a lot of other folks. So, um, but yeah, to talk about this, so out of 13 songs... Basically, out of 13 songs, I wound up recommending six. So I'm going to recommend those six songs to you, and we'll talk about some of these. So the six songs I recommend would be Bands with Meek Mill, Block of the Flame, M.I.A., Quintana, uh, Upper Echelon, and Uptown. So to talk about some of these, like... 
First, I'm going to talk about some of the moments that I didn't enjoy. There's a lot of kind of one and a half minute skits on here that kind of bogged down the project. I think he was kind of aiming for like some of the more alternative rap type feels of like Kanye West back in his college dropout and late registration days. Folks like Common and some of those type people, which it just, I like the concept of Travis Scott at least kind of having some degree of a come up from alternative rap, but I feel like he really kind of like manifested like his complete niche for himself with this early trap type music that he was kind of doing and this kind of the alternative rap just, is just not quite as fitting it kind of feels more kind of unctuous and it's not quite as compelling as some of the other stuff but there's three of those songs that's just slash three of them and then there's a lot of lengthy songs on here like you can tell the ones that are kind of more pined and crafted for radio and more nightclub and kind of sprawling car music is because a lot of these songs like drive dance on the moon and hell well hell of a night's not a longer one but just some of these like uh bad mood shit on you dance on the moon and drive kind of have like lengthier kind of songs on here that just are not quite as catchy in a lot of ways i definitely felt like drive was just kind of an amalgamation of just like a lot of stuff that had going on it's just kind of a messy mixy kind of song that just didn't have really too much spark or compellingness and then dance on the moon had a decent good beat but i think the song should have been shorted by about third shortened by about 35 seconds and they really changed the beat on paul wall's verse which i wish they wouldn't have done that's part of the main reason and why I didn't like this song as much. It's kind of a decent nightclub bop and Travis Scott's verses, and it's interesting to get Travis Scott to pair up with Paul Wall, but this kind of the concept about it is I didn't like the beat change up at the end. Travis Scott kind of does that. He's known for doing that with songs like uh, that, uh, that song that he did with Drake, which I forget what that song is called, but yeah, it hit like sicko mode when he does stuff like that with sicko mode and some of those type moments. But Bad Mood, Shit on You, and Dance on the Moon and Driver just kind of messier, kind of lengthier songs that kind of bog down the process just because they just kind of have like some this kind of offbeat kind of productions that just don't quite suit them quite as well. I mean, it's just kind of, it's just more abstract and kind of experimental hip hop that just didn't quite, the experimentation just didn't quite come off as like a real vessel of like infectiousness as far as that kind of went. But the songs that I did enjoy or the, the songs that I do recommend would definitely be like Uptown. Uptown is a definite kind of amidst like a nightclub or strip club kind of highlight. This one just kind of feels like a real furious and kind of busy sounding energy towards it. ASAP, ASAP Ferg suits this song pretty well, so it's a good one to kind of get. This one just kind of has a real factory and industrial like busyness about it that just kind of has like some real stock kind of nightclub kind of energy. It's just for a regular night, but kind of a busy night at that. I kind of like that one. It has real marching and triumphant kind of energy. I feel like M.I.A. is kind of like a busier club type song. This is definitely one that Future kind of does. This is the same kind of vibes that Future kind of has with some of those kind of like more ravenous kind of crazy busier nightclub kind of feels. But this has like a real kind of synthy and this the piano keys on here are just really kind of hype and this more alarming and paranoid and that type of stuff. It's just kind of one that you definitely would cruise pretty quickly in a vehicle. This is kind of a vehicle song that just kind of has like a more sense of alarm about it and just a lot more, not necessarily paranoia, but just kind of a more alertness and just kind of a lot more like jivey kind of feel towards it. It's just a very jivey song as MIA. It just has that kind of glittering and kind of like um, a, a alert kind of energy as far as that kind of goes is definitely kind of a nightclub song just like some of the singles are but this one just kind of has like a lot more kind of tension about it that i like so that's a good one and then bands with meek mill bands with meek mill is just kind of an emphasized kind of sprawling kind of club song this one's kind of more of a basic club song but it just kind of has a more exhilarating energy where you're really having fun for the night this is not just like a six o'clock p.m just showed up at the club but this is kind of amidst the night like 9 30 10 p.m something like that where the energy is kind of going maybe you have a few drinks in your system you're just overall having a good time having a lot of fun that type of stuff just kind of turned up and you're just enjoying yourself and you know the times are being had and that type of stuff as far as it goes it's kind of a thrilling kind of compelling night as far as that kind of went so this is definitely one to kind of play when the energy is really getting turned and things are going well that just kind of happens to be a thing so yeah but me for me to talk about the fact that i talk about the songs i didn't enjoy and the six songs i did for a mixtape that's 13 songs that's about half the projects so that's pretty good but minus like these three interludes they're not really so much songs as much as like songy kind of 
vocals on there, but just not much more than just like a demo and kind of mini kind of song. I'd say six out of 10 approximately. I would just go ahead and give this mixtape like a 6.25 out of 10. I feel like that's pretty solid enough to be able to say that there's enough on here. I mean, I know me liking approximately a little bit less than half of the actual project just says that it should probably get a, a approximate score, but I think 6.25 is good enough to be able to say that there is some stuff on here. Definitely is revolutionary in a lot of ways. Like these singles carried a lot of power just because this helped. There's a lot of power in the singles just because these singles help kick off a subgenre that continues to be popular today, and that's over 10 years later. So that's just kind of the concept about it. Like all of these singles hit real hard and they're great. If you have a pretty decent whip and you have like some nice flashiness about your car and you take pride in that type of stuff, these are songs that still have power today and continue to be thrilling and re relevant on top of that. So that's just some good moments. These are good stepping out moments. Travis Scott has that looming kind of personality with charisma. There's just some good moments on here to kind of have. And this is just kind of an overlooked project overall compared to all the stuff that's come out just within the past 10 years. So it's a good one to kind of dig up. So the social score, I'm going to give the social score like a 7.75 out of 10 because I feel like these songs do have a lot of power. Like I said, this is an impactful project, had some good thrills. I mean, it's not compellingly the whole way through. There are some other moments. If you dig through it, maybe you can find some of the ones that I didn't enjoy. But for the most part, it's more the power of the six songs I recommend and just the impact of those and just how effective and relevant they are compared to just the fact that this whole mixtape is like, uh, wall to wall excellent that just kind of happens to be a thing so it gets 7.75 lots of good friday saturday moments it's free music it's 10 years old but that doesn't matter it still sounds relevant so that's this kind of thing in terms of the future like travis scott has been talking for a while about this utopia project and it's really been since jack boys in late 2019 since he's done anything I mean, Don Tolliver has been around. He's dropped some albums. So I want to check out some more of those, but I'm kind of interested. I'm going to get to some more Travis Scott, but I'm just going to have to say that this is one to kind of say, hey, remember this project and then fuck with it and kind of have some good times and to fuck with this project, relive some excellent times and have some good enjoyment again.